You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com Tonight on Earth Oddity Podcast. Cattle mutilations in Oregon. Has the military developed a bovine shredding ray gun? Or are extraterrestrials harvesting the reproductive organs of our planet's cattle? And later, a Texas man claims voodoo made him shoplift from his local Walmart. Could darker forces be at work in the small town of Lufkin? Team up with your hosts, Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long, and together, Maybe you could help solve a mystery. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Earth Oddity. Sitting across from me is John. What's I'm up? Tiny. And together, we are the bad boys of Southern evangelical humor. The unwanted, how did this, how did it go? The unofficial, the unauthorized, and the unappreciated voices of Southern Baptists across the nation. Definitely unappreciated. <laughs> Definitely so. <laughs> Probably resented a little bit too. You know, I don't see like uh, what's his name, Robert Jeffers or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't see him really liking our show. You know, isn't that the dude that's like the president of Dallas? You know, Baptist or whatever. First Baptist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't see him liking our show too much. What about uh, Jerry Falwell Jr.? No, we're definitely on his <laughs> list already. I think he would have liked us until that one week. Yeah, until we had to talk about him. <laughs> yes. Right. But, I mean, let me just say, Jerry Falwell Jr., I extend an offer to go dancing with you anytime you want to. <laughs> yeah. You know? I'll keep it down home because... <laughs> Yeah. That's what I say. It, I don't, bo- it don't bother me that nah. you listen for five minutes to music at a Miami yeah. nightclub. No, yeah, no, nah, definitely. I'll, I'll I'll hang out with you. It's cool. It's think, definitely cool. I think the seniors should go there on on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, yeah, I let you Liberty has some really lame spring break. <laughs> they all go to Gallenberg. They probably all go to Gallenberg. <laughs> they go yeah. to the Dixie Stampede. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Get their photo taken. <laughs> Class of. 2019. <laughs> yeah, that's a horrible spring break. Mm, yeah. Well, the cabin, they bet they get a nice cabin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they got a nice cabin. I mean, one for the boys and one for the girls. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, how was your week? Uh, it was really great. It was really great. Good. Got good. a new foster kid living with us. So All right. If you're out there listening, pray for us. Out because, with the old, in with the new, as they right. say. Yeah. Yeah. Sure missed the old one, but... <laughs> The new one's doing all right, too. <laughs> yeah, he seems to be a really good kid, though. He's hadn't, he hadn't got a, been around here long enough for us to really know him or for him to really know us. Still pretty new. I got here Thursday afternoon, so, yeah, we're we're still feeling each other out, so right. to speak. I mean, that's, Careful, a bad, that's a bad turn of phrase right there. We're still getting to know each other. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. But, yeah, right. it's been a great week. How was yours? It was pretty good. I mean, it was it's first week of October, still yeah. 90 degrees outside. Well, so I know you went to a so pumpkin hot. patch. We went to the pumpkin <laughs> patch uh, like this past weekend. Yeah. And it was, I want to say it was like 96 out there. Right. Golly. I hugged Hudson's neck so much for being sick and not making me go. You know? <laughs> I was like, hey, buddy, buddy. You, just share it with me. Yeah. Get me sick, too. I was just like, I'm so glad you're sick. Never been happier for a child to be sick. And then last night when we were getting ready for bed, Deidre was like, uh, you know, who's going to stay home with Hudson tomorrow? And I was like, well, why don't we let him pick? You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. One of us stay home in the morning. One of us stay home at night. Mm-hmm. And so when I went up to tuck him in, I was like, look, you know, your mama's going to ask you about who you want to stay home with you tomorrow morning. <laughs> It's like, I'm just, I'm not telling you who to pick, but I'm just saying football starts at 12, you know? <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, if you got a choice, he's like, I got you, buddy. I was like, all right. And you fist bump. That's right. Exactly what we did. And then we were going to eat something crazy for lunch. He's like, I want some McDonald's. I was like, yeah, me too, because I don't have to fix lunch, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, you know, you might want to text your mom. 
mom and see if she'll pick you up a hamburger on the way home. Tell her, you know, to make you feel better. And so he did that. And Deidre like has to go to McDonald's and get all of his food. <laughs> but I did do all the laundry today, so it's not like I didn't do anything. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and I won't church duty tonight. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So and well, we got revival service tonight. That's so. right. Yeah. So we'll probably be there all night long. <laughs> A lot of people <laughs> repenting. All of that. We'll be there for the whole time. <laughs> Well, anyway, you got any good stories this week? I do. I got a Florida woman story. Okay. Which is really pretty good. Um, I have a very one that's near and dear to my heart about a woman who's quit her job to become a 50s housewife. So, okay. Yeah. It's going to be a more of a PSA for the ladies out in the audience. I was about to say, does her plan involve a time machine? <laughs> no, no, but she's doing the best she can. <laughs> okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Well, I've got a church in Florida that could be relocating to maybe a eyebrow raising location. Okay. And we've got a Mark Zuckerberg story, but I'm going to start with this because why not? Okay. And we're talking about cattle mutilations in uh, Oregon. Okay. Yes. This was huge in the Facebook group. <laughs> yes. If you're not in the Facebook group, go join up right now. There was <laughs> extensive debate upon this article. So, there was. Which I stayed out of, by the way. <laughs> but, but hey, I'm, I'm yeah. bringing it to the show. You That's can't right. avoid it no more. That's right. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in now. So. <laughs> yes. Five bulls found dead in Oregon, and then the story gets weirder. Okay. This comes from the AP. And this comes from Salem, Oregon. The first dead bull was found in a timbered ravine in eastern Oregon. There was no indication it had been shot, attacked by predators, or eaten poisonous plants. The animal's sex organs and tongue had been removed, mm. and all the blood was gone. Oh. Sound familiar? Satanist. Because, <laughs> yeah, they just they can't get enough of that That's bull right. blood. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, tongues and all that. And sex yeah. organs. Sex organs, yeah. Yes. In the next few days, four more bulls were found within one and a half miles in the same condition. There were no tracks around the carcasses. Ranch management and law enforcement suspect that someone killed the bulls. Ranch hands have been advised to travel in pairs and to go armed. Ever since the bulls were found over several days in July, Harney County Sheriff's Deputy Dan Jenkins has received many calls and emails from people speculating Speculating what or who might be responsible. Mm. The theories range from scavengers such as carrion bugs eating the carcasses to people attacking the animals to cause financial harm to the ranchers, which isn't a terrible. No. You know, I think that uh, militant vegans, you know, they are a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think they would kill a bull, right? Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I take they, that back. Now they'll take out a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> But not on purpose. True. Yeah, no, not on, not on purpose. <laughs> Jenkins, who is leading the investigation that also involves state police, has run into only dead ends and has no witnesses. If anyone has concrete information or knows any cases that have been solved in the past, that would definitely be helpful, he said. Colby Marshall, vice president of Sylvie's Valley Ranch that owns the Bulls, has another theory. We think that this crime is being perpetrated by some sort of a cult. The cattle mutilation cult. <laughs> okay. Residents speculate that there could be UFO involvement. One person suggests that Jenkins looked for craters underneath the carcasses, saying that it would be evidence that the bulls had been levitated into a spaceship, uh -oh. mutilated, and then dropped back down to the ground. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Similar incidents in the past have also garnered UFO theories. The hmm. case recalls mutilations of livestock across the U.S. West and Midwest in the 1970s that struck fear in rural areas. Thousands of cattle and other livestock ranging from Minnesota to Mexico to New Mexico were found dead with their reproductive organs and sometimes parts of their faces removed. Ranchers began carrying guns. Folks said that helicopters have been heard around the kill sites. A federal agency canceled an inventory by helicopter of its lands in Colorado, worried that it would get shot down. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. A couple of U.S. senators urged the FBI to investigate, according to FBI documents. Uh, after saying it lacked jurisdiction, the FBI agreed to investigate cases on tribal lands, but the mutilation stopped. Now, huh. I'm, I can only assume that the agents who investigated this were Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, right? <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> uh, former FBI agent Kenneth Rommel, who headed the investigation, said that there was no indication that anything other than common predators were responsible. Okay. Uh, cases have emerged sporadically since then. In the 1980s, a few cows were found dead and mutilated in eastern Oregon. More recently, there have been cases on a ranch near Flagstaff, Arizona. Hmm. Some of the mutilations can be attributed to natural causes. An animal drops dead, the blood pools at the bottom of the cork carcass, it bloats, and the skin dries out and splits. 
The tears often appear surgical. Carrion bugs, birds, and other scavengers go for the soft tissues. <laughs> Dave Bonnert, director of Oregon State University's Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center in Burns, said that he believes people killed the most recent bulls because there was no indication that they were felled by pred predators or had eaten poisonous plants. However, the state of the carcasses could be attributable to nature, he said, who is not officially investigating the case. If people killed the bulls, a motive could be to financially harm the ranch, he said, noting that breeding bulls cost thousands of dollars each, and the 100-plus calves each of them sire are collectively worth much more. And then it just goes on to say how big the ranch is, how many people are employed by it, and basically the history of the ranch. Uh, down here, Jenkins, the deputy, now this is the deputy who's... Yeah. Who's investigating? He says, per, "Quote: Personally, I would lean more towards the occult, where people, for whatever reason, whether it's a phase of the moon or whatever rituals they're going to do with their beliefs, are coming to different areas and doing that." He said. I mean, bingo! I called it <laughs> straight off the bat. Yes. Give me a job with the sheriff's department. <laughs> the Oregon Cattle Association is offering a thousand dollar reward for information leading to the conviction of those responsible. A thousand dollars, John. Wow. You could have one I mean, thousand big ones. That's right. I could do a lot with that <laughs> if money. You can, if you can find the uh, Satanist responsible for these cattle <laughs> mutilations. I'll get Oregon. on to it. I'll get on it. I, well, I'm so a, I guess the topic, just what do you think about the whole the I think whole it's thing? the government. Yeah. I think they've developed some sort of weapon, like a ray weapon or something, <laughs> yes. that does this, right? You know, That liquefies sex organs. Yes, right. Because... <laughs> I mean, all right, so it, it take your butthole and your private parts away, right? <laughs> right. Because when China or whoever invades us, I mean, the first wave, we hit them with that. The other ones are not coming. <laughs> like when you find out, it's one thing to die like a, a, a hero's death, <laughs> yeah. you know, of, of a bullet or whatever through the <laughs> heart. But when you find out your private parts and your butthole is getting disintegrated and your tongue's coming out, you're going to be like, nah, I'm, nah, I don't think I want to invade. So yeah. I just want to say thank you to the government for killing <laughs> private property uh, in an effort to take care of all of us. So yeah. <laughs> Private property. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I think it is. Now, I was reading while you were talking, not to be rude. No, 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 go ahead. Some other theories. Some people think that there are parasitic larvae that will get inside animals and they will eat everything mm -hmm. you know as they're soft growing tissues, yeah. yeah soft tissues as they're growing mm -hmm. and this is what's causing it right it's gonna be, they cited wasp you know mm -hmm. which is wasp or of the devil anyways so i'm pretty much still <laughs> right with my satanist yeah but uh but that's gonna be a lot of wasp coming out of there i gotta you know? be honest i mean none of this makes sense yeah uh, right I definitely don't lean towards the UFO explanation because, first of all, for UFOs to be coming from outer space, for, right. to be for their for extraterrestrials to be visiting us, then they obviously would have a complete different under understanding of physics. Like, right from the known laws of physics, it's just not possible to travel light years right. in like a single lifetime or something. Yeah, that now, we know of. That we know of. Right. And maybe there's maybe they know something we don't. That's Could that's be. possible. Yeah. But then to think that they, and I understand that if you're talking about an alien, you can't assume anything yeah, about, right. about their motivation or anything. But it just seems odd that they would come all this way <laughs> just to zap cows right. with their I don't know. With their weapons. Well, I, uh, I did, and not to change the subject, but I saw a very interesting question posed this week. And it was like, what if aliens are headed our way? And for like the month before they get here, all they consume is like television. You know, yeah. They're like, what would their image of our world be when they got here? Mm -hmm. That may be like, hey, we're we're taking out the cows. You know, like I got stuck on the rodeo channel or something. <laughs> <laughs> like these cows are trying to hurt these people. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's very odd. And then we we talked about this. I have heard now. I have not. I'm not a researcher. I'm not an investigator. I haven't done a whole lot of studies on yeah. cattle mutilations. But I hear something come up over and over and over that these tend to happen with you know relatively nearby military installations. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, it's the army. And when I went to Google, sure enough, there is a U.S. naval bombing range 188 miles away. About boom. There so you go. Yeah. And no pun intended with that boom. But yeah, uh, 
I, I think it's the military. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always have. It's much more plausible. You know, uh, what is it, uh, Occam's Razor or whatever? Yes, yes. That's the easiest explanation mm-hmm. to me that's happening. Now, maybe the military is in cahoots with the aliens. I mean, they wouldn't <laughs> let us in Area 51. That's true. So, you know, they could be working together on all Didn't this. matter how fast they Naruto run. <laughs> that's right, yes. <laughs> Yeah, which I uh, there's a funny little documentary I watched on that too mm-hmm. this week, uh, which was pretty good. Some guys went out there and took some acid. <laughs> it's pretty great, by the way. Uh, I'll say this too: I would personally, I would like to believe that these cows are dying from natural causes and that there's nothing to see here. Right. But there are, you know, professors saying that this wasn't natural predators. Right. So well, I'm saying that I don't know. It doesn't appear that they've been scavenged either. Right. You know, like you would Which think, is weird. You would yeah. think, yeah. Like if an animal falls over dead anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, especially around here, there's going to be a coyote eating on it pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Buzzards. And yeah. Buzzards. Yeah. Oh, buzzards like crazy, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I think it's the military, though. And I'm not commenting that on the thread in the Facebook group. <laughs> I'm not getting into a very long debate with people who <laughs> obviously know way more than I do about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's move on to a story that's kind of wild. Just just came across the desk here. Okay. Um, it reads, a Lufkin man uh, claimed voodoo, voodoo made him shoplift from Walmart. Okay. Yeah. So a 29-year-old man told Lufkin police, this is Lufkin, Texas, by the way. Gotcha. Um, he told the Lufkin police that the that the voodoo made him try to smuggle items out of Walmart without paying for them Thursday, according to a LF, LPD media report. Joshua Allen Renfro, I'm kin to some Renfros, by the way. <laughs> That's my great-grandfather's side of the family, of Hip Hill, was booked into Angelina County Jail on a Class B misdemeanor uh, theft charge. He was released from jail later Thursday and he po- after posting a bail of $1,500 bond. According to the Lufkin PD media reports, the alleged incident occurred at the Walmart store located at 2500 Daniel McCall Drive at about 4.36 p.m. Renfro was caught after he allegedly tried to smuggle more than $400 worth of merchandise out of the store in a plastic tote. Which for kind of, he went over and got him a tote and filled it up, you know. Uh, Four hundred dollars is at Walmart. Wool. Yeah, that's ah, a lot. pretty good bit. Yeah, yeah, you filled that bad boy up. It's to the brim. I bet you had to struggle to get that Tupperware lid on it, you know, and get it shut. <laughs> He's like, st- like had his knees on it, you know. Yeah. After Renfro was arrested, he kept telling LPD officers that the voodoo made him try to steal the items from Walmart. Okay, if I'm an investigator, if I'm the detective that's handling this case, mm-hmm. my first question is, well, who do the voodoo? <laughs> that you do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's see. And it says, uh, he also told them that the voodoo told him not to brush his teeth that morning. My kids have used that. <laughs> my kids have used that excuse. And that's all the article has to say. But, I mean, if the voodoo's telling you... <laughs> To shoplift, it's more than likely going to be like a live chicken or something. Not something from Walmart, I would think. <laughs> well, I don't know. Voodoo creeps me out, by the way. <laughs> well, okay. I'm, I'm not <laughs> afraid of much, but voodoo, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Well, we got voodoo mama juju right here. <laughs> she's got her little voodoo doll of this guy. <laughs> right. And she's walking him down into like a toy Walmart yeah. and like making him take making stuff. Making him get stuff. <laughs> and like, he can't stop, right? <laughs> I don't Is that know. what's going on? Maybe she's, yeah, she's going to like walk him over to her house because she needs like <laughs> toilet paper and all that. She's not going to do Walmart grocery pickup. <laughs> say, it's, it's like Walmart grocery pickup, but better. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like uh, you get down to New Orleans and all that, they have like voodoo tours and stuff. And I yeah. know it's all just tourist trap stuff. It still just freaks me out for some reason. It gives me a heebie jeebies. So it's creepy. Yeah. But I don't, yeah, I don't know what your, I don't know what voodoo would make you shoplift you know unless <laughs> well, like you say somebody's well, got a little say, voodoo doll if it's a voodoo doll they can yeah. make you do anything right now his mug shot i mean he looks like he's got a little more problems you know i mean he just looks like a troubled young man you know he, i'm not gonna lie he looks kind of like the physical embodiment of a voodoo doll yeah right i mean he's got the stitch across his face and everything yeah. i mean that's not somebody you'd see running a board meeting somewhere <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> know. you know 
<laughs> That's so, a dude that you would see down at the probate court waiting in the lobby. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Got to see his probation officer check in for the week, take his drug test. Yes. They pulled his color this week or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. I guarantee he's got some bad tattoos. You know? But, <laughs> but yeah, I just can't think of, of much at Walmart that's voodoo related. You right. know? Like I say, live chickens or, mm-hmm. you know, the hair of a newt or something, you know, that they would need. So I don't know what he would be. Well, maybe this lady, she just, I think she just needed some groceries. Well, and I I told you earlier, I'll tell everybody on the podcast, what's up? Shout out to my mom. (laughs) When I was a kid, like maybe five years old, at my grandmother's one day, I set, in one day, I set the tablecloth on fire. My (laughs) Aunt Jo, shout out to Aunt Jo too, she listens. And my grandmother like poured this whole jug of tea on me to put it out you know because i was sitting right there where it was flaming up <laughs> and then after that i went and painted on the wall in my grandmother's living room with shoe polish i mean uh fingernail polish oh, and man. uh and when my mom you know of course i got in so much trouble when my mom came after work to get me she asked me what i got into me i told her the devil made me do it <laughs> so maybe this is the same excuse this guy's trying to use <laughs> But I've, and once again, mom and aunt Joe, I find it appalling that I got in so much trouble for setting that tablecloth on fire, but no one else got in trouble for leaving a lighter laying on a table <laughs> unattended. This is before childproof lighters too, <laughs> unattended for a young John to find, which I didn't intentionally set it on fire. I was just striking it and it caught the tablecloth on fire. So, but voodoo <laughs> made me do that too. So what did you draw on the wall? Was he like painting six, six, six on there or no. something? <laughs> it was some, it was just like some, it was cause you know, our fingernail polish has a little brush in it, you know? So right. I pulled it out and me, it was like, well, this is for painting. Right. <laughs> and it was, it more or less looked like a Chinese symbol, you know, maybe it was a Chinese symbol for devil. <laughs> And it was on the wall below the window behind her chair, and uh, and it stayed there for years. I mean, it no one painted over it; or it just stayed there for years. And I would look at it every time I went in her living room. And yeah. oddly enough, when John would stare at that symbol, <laughs> your aunt would be mind controlled and do whatever uh, you told her to the do. The cows across the street would be mutilated. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But anyways, I was an angel as a child and, and the devil certainly made me do that. All right. Gotcha. He knew he was like, this guy's going to be a trouble for me. I better get to him early. <laughs> you know, he could tell, you know? <laughs> okay. So yeah, I feel you voodoo guy shoplifting. I'm mm-hmm. gonna use it if I ever shoplift again. Well, like, the maybe devil made me do it. <laughs> you know? Well, let me ask you about billionaires. What do you think about billionaires? Do you think anybody should have that much money? I don't really care if they have that much money. You know, mm-hmm. honestly. I mean, if you if you built a business or whatever and you make a billion dollars, good for you. you well, know? now there is one prominent individual who disagrees with you. Well, now I was going to throw a caveat <laughs> in here. If you got a billion dollars, you probably need to just be doing something with it to help everybody. Else. Okay. You know, I mean, if you got a thousand dollars and that's more than what you need, you should probably use the rest of it to help mm-hmm. somebody out. That's in my opinion. Right. But I wouldn't force you to. Well, Here's Mark Zuckerberg's thoughts on billionaires. Okay, he's a little rich. Quote, no one deserves to have that much money. Oh, that's rich coming from him. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Which is just kind of odd. But anyway, this comes from CNN Business. Mark Zuckerberg, the fifth richest person in the world with many billions of dollars to his name, said that he understands where Bernie Sanders is coming from when the Democratic presidential candidate says that billionaires shouldn't exist. Okay. Quote, I don't know if I have an exact threshold on what amount of money someone should have, but on some level, no one deserves to have that much money. The Facebook CEO said during a town hall event at the company's headquarters on Thursday in response to an employee's question about Sanders comments, Zuckerberg that employee probably got fired too. You know, who did. <laughs> you can't be asking Zuckerberg this stuff, you know, like, do you think he would have said that if it hadn't been live streamed? Right. If it had yeah. been like in a board like room a, somewhere, just a meeting there, like a staff. <laughs> Staff meeting or whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, he never would have brought it up. I bet. I bet his uh, his robot Android brain was like, <laughs> you know, you got to answer this, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, Zuckerberg currently has a net worth of nearly seventy billion. Seventy billion. Seven, that's with a B. Now, billion. a billion is a hundred millions, right? 
Uh, don't I'm not the math guy. To I think ask. I think that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. Because I thought it was a million millions, but it can't be that much, can it? Heck, I don't know, dude. I didn't never see that amount of money in my life, so I never really paid attention when people were talking about it. Siri, how many millions is a billion dollars? The answer is one quadrillion U.S. dollars. No, no. you misunderstood my Siri. Siri. <laughs> Siri, I'm disappointed. Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Should have asked Alexa. Look, somebody email in and let us know. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index, he has previously pledged to give away 99% of his Facebook shares. Quote, I think if you do something that's good, you get rewarded. But I do think some of the wealth that can be accumulated is unreasonable, he said at the event. In an unusual move, Zuckerberg decided to live stream the company event after audio from internal meetings conducted in July was leaked and published earlier this week. He said Thursday that the company believes an intern shared the audio recording. <laughs> Quote, <laughs> Our internal Q&As at Facebook are one of my favorite traditions. And after the transcript of one of them was published online earlier this week, I thought it would be good to show everyone what these Q&As are like. So... Okay, I found the answer, too, by the way. Okay. It's a thousand millions. A thousand millions. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. I should have just asked you to begin with. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. But anyway, I, I, that's interesting. You know, after his after the transcript got released, he just he just had the idea to live stream it because he loves it. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Zuckerberg wrote in a post on his personal Facebook page Thursday on Thursday, minutes before a broadcast of the town hall event began. In the leaked audio obtained by tech site The Verge, Zuckerberg comments on another presidential candidate, Senator Elizabeth Warren and admits to the employee that the prospect of her as president would, quote, suck for Facebook, (laughs) given her promises to break up tech companies. On Thursday, Zuckerberg was asked how he could stay impartial on presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren following his past statements about her. Quote, let's try not to antagonize her further, Zuckerberg said of Warren on Thursday. He added, I would rather have someone get elected, even if I disagree with them on everything, which I don't even think that's the case here, than not give them the ability to say what they think. Warren released an aggressive plan earlier this year to break up tech giants like Facebook, Amazon, and Google. If you have someone like Elizabeth Warren who thinks that the right answer is to break up the companies, Zuckerberg said in a meeting with Facebook employees this summer, according to the leaked audio, if she gets elected president, then I would bet that we will have a legal challenge. And I would bet that we will win that legal challenge. And does that still suck for us? Yeah. <laughs> but look, he continued, at the end of the day, if someone's going to try to threaten something that's existential, but you go to the mat and you fight. No. So Whatever. We all know Zuckerberg's <laughs> a CIA plan anyways. <laughs> but, I'm not uh, sure he's a human person. Yeah, I think no. he's a robot. Yeah. But here's the thing, Zuckerberg, and all you rich people out here who talk about how don't nobody need to have a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. Just just give us a, cut us a check. Yeah. You know? Like give all us of us, right? So there's what, three hundred and twenty five million people in the United States? Mm-hmm. He could give a million dollars to every person easily. Mm-hmm. You know, now he's gonna pay some taxes on that. <laughs> yes. Because it's above whatever the threshold is to give away as a gift. Or we are too, but I mean, hey, let's I put your money where your mouth is, buddy. I would sell Zuckerberg 100% of the shares of stock in the Earth Oddity podcast. No. Nah, he can have He it. can have 49. <laughs> we can't turn all control over, all right? I was say, well, we can But just... we value it at a million dollars a share, all right? That's what it's valued at. <laughs> yes. Okay? Well, we'll start there. Maybe we start at $5 million a share. Right. And we'll work our way down to a million. We and can't go under half a million a and share. And we take Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so... Sure. I don't even know how that works, but yeah, we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, every time I hear rich people talk about, and I'm talking about rich people, you know, yeah, like, I mean, sh- like sh- as we say down here in the South, show enough rich yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, right. Show enough rich. <laughs> well, every time I hear about them talking about how nobody needs to have a bunch of money, I'm always just like, why don't you just give us your money then? I mean, just start <laughs> handing it out. Yes. Like, what's the big deal? You know? <laughs> Oh, well, I got a foundation and I help people. We, we open up a school somewhere. Well, I don't care. Write me a check, man. You know, do like professional athletes. Make it rain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretend you're in a strip club. Come to my neighborhood and just start throwing money out. Yeah. Watch all the poor people fight for it. That would be entertaining. <laughs> do do you know? like Jack Nicholson did in the Batman movie where he just <laughs> threw money everywhere. Yeah. I Had mean, a big parade. 
I, you know, I, I, I've, I doubt the sincerity of all billionaires <laughs> who talk about how billionaires shouldn't have a billion dollars. Yeah. Because you can easily, you can get rid of, you can liquidate right. those assets if what's you the, wanted to. What's the movie had Richard Pryor and Gene Hackman in it? Brewster's Millions. Have mm-hmm. you ever seen Brewster's Millions? I don't think so. Finally seen a movie you haven't seen. <laughs> okay. So Brewster's Millions, he, Richard Pryor gets left like a million dollars, but he has in order to get, a, or like he gets left like $10 million, whatever. But in order to get it, he has to spend a million dollars like in a weekend. And oh, so, wow. you know, he like buys a minor league baseball team and all this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty amazing, and that's what I always think. Like, hey guys, just I mean, just give your money away if you don't want all of it. Yeah, come on down here and make you know a pauper's living like all of us are doing, <laughs> and let's hear you talk about how rich people don't need to have money. You yeah. know, I'm cool with you giving it away. And really, when you get down to it, I mean, the reason they have that money is because of us, right? Yeah. If we didn't use Facebook every single day and constantly check our feeds that yes. allowed them to sell ads, exactly, they wouldn't have those billions of dollars. Yeah, right. So and, uh, look. Like I said earlier, before we got on air, all he's got to do is give all his money away. You know, mm-hmm. let us all have a million dollars or whatever. And when the proletariat rises up, he, <laughs> will, he will be spared from the guillotine like <laughs> all the other rich people won't be. So right. let's get ahead of the curve, all right? <laughs> that sounds like I'm a socialist. Before too, the knife the drops. <laughs> yeah, before the knife drops. Because, <laughs> you know, it's coming one day. The workers of the world are going to unite. Uh, Heads will roll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's going to say I'm definitely not a communist before anybody gets that rumor started, okay? Because I think there's a problem with the government having that much money and power, too. Yeah, right, yeah. And and, and then we, we get to the point where it's like, well, this, this, the wealth has to go somewhere. Right, yeah. You know? That's the thing. Man is corrupt. We all, yes. we all agree whether you're a staunch atheist mm-hmm. or the biggest Baptist in the world. Man is corrupt, and men are in charge of government, and if we centralize all the money there, we're going to have some of the same problems. And as much as I hate to say it, if the church gets all the money, oh, yeah. it don't always work no. out for the best yeah. either. Right. I don't want to offend <laughs> I don't want to offend any of my Catholic friends, but sometimes you see the Pope like holding up a gold cross praying, you're like, hey, shouldn't we give some of that money to the poor people? <laughs> and I know the Catholic Church does a lot worldwide do. for do. poor, so I'm not picking on them, but... Same thing for Olstein. I mean, I could pick on anybody <laughs> of the Protestants too. You know, it's easy for us to cast stones because we don't have that money. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. <laughs> the minute we get rich, we're like, hey, wait, now yeah. we do a lot of good. That's right. We're helping everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm wearing my like thousand dollar suits. You know, to church. You know, I'm helping. I help like, the poor. Like preacher sneakers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like if you got it. Well, I'm just going to say this. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a lot of regrets. I mean, I'm going to have a ton when I'm standing before Christ, a ton of them. But not the one I'm not going to have is, hey, John, it looks like you were sitting on a lot of money that you could have been helping other people with. <laughs> yes. You know, right. that's not going to be the one I have. All right. You're not going to get up there and be like, oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. You said the last shall be first. Right. Yeah. Right, and like help out the widows and the children and all that stuff. I thought you were, oh yeah, I thought you were talking about last in GPA. <laughs> like, well, yeah, no, Lord, weren't you concerned about me having a small, you know, million dollar nest egg to hand down to my children? And he'd be like, <laughs> and confirm, no, not at all. You know, confirm them in their worldliness. Yeah, right. He's like, no, not at all. I was meaning for you to give that away. That's why I gave you the life I gave you. You know, I mean, for you to help people with it. You know, yeah. So that's not going to be a worry. I, had, I got a ton more, <laughs> probably more than anybody listening here, but that's not one that I'm going to fall in because I'll give every dollar I have away. I don't care. That's, yeah. That, probably the main reason my business went under is I just don't care about money. You know, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just not necessary. Anyways, let's move on to a lady here. And this is just for all the ladies out here listening. I want y'all to just pay attention. Maybe get out a notepad, pencil, you know, might be some information in here you should know. <laughs> A uh, woman's quit. A woman quits job to become a fifties housewife because she thinks husband should be spoiled. Wait, wait what? What? Huh? Uh huh. She quit her job to become a fifties housewife because she thinks husband should be spoiled. Man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's in Oregon, by the way. Shout out to Johnny. I want to see if she's got a sister or something. <laughs> Let me ask you this: If I say I agree with a woman 
Does that make me sexist <laughs> in this in this case? I don't, maybe I don't know. <laughs> it depends. Man. It's hypothetically, hard. Yeah. hypothetically, it's hard not to be sexist nowadays. You know, <laughs> yes. Um, completely by choice, thirty-year-old Katrina Holt now lives as a fifties housewife, cooking, cleaning, and looking after her husband while making dresses from nineteen fifties patterns in her spare time. Uh, real quick, um. Not this isn't for me, but because I know everyone out there listening is thinking the same question. Is there a picture? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's a picture. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, not bad, not bad at all. I mean, <laughs> look at him. Oh boy, could have done a lot worse, right? High five. Yeah, right. He could have done a lot worse. <laughs> but she ain't gonna know my woman. But whatever. Uh, completely by choice. Thirty year old Katrina Holt now lives. I've already read that paragraph. Katrina. Even transformed her home in Hillsboro into a working shrine to the era, fitting it out and decorating it in 1950s decor. Um, she spoke about her dedication to her role, saying, My closet is full of 1950s dresses I've made myself. I have 1940s style furniture in the living room and a traditional bedroom. It's not like a museum, but I do try and make it as close to the era as I can. I can feel like I was born in the wrong decade, especially when I look at everything that is happening in the world now. I feel like I belong in a nicer, more old-fashioned time, but I know everything happens for a reason, and it's God's will that I'm here now. Okay, throwing out God's will there. All <laughs> yeah. right. Knowing her house is spick and span when Lars comes home. Didn't know she married the drummer of Metallica. <laughs> When no in their house is spick and span when Lars comes home, after dinner, the couple relax playing traditional board games like Scrabble together before watching old-fashioned shows like I Love Lucy and the Donna Reed Show. Nick at night. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I was all in until we got to there. I mean, during football, like, we don't have to watch it during football season, right? We can turn on the color TV for football. You know what? If I could just have one small room in the house <laughs> yeah. where I could, you know, put my video games. Yeah, my computer and <laughs> my all that. My computer and all that stuff, I think I'd be okay. She says, I agree with old-fashioned values like being a housewife, <laughs> taking care of your family, nurturing the people in it, and keeping your house in excellent condition so everyone feels relaxed. A part-time seamstress for 10 years, Katrina, who also sells her retro frocks across the world, said, My new life started in September 2018 after I left my job, which was starting to wear me down. I was getting tired, and I wasn't living up to my own expectations. I spoke to my husband and told him I want to be a housewife, and he said that was fine with him. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> it was a fantastic feeling when I quit. I can do what I want to now and run my house as I want to run it. Now I'm a full-time homemaker. I will say none of these pictures have any kids in it. You know? <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> I know that with my wife, because she works part-time. Now, she makes a ton of money doing what she does. Right. But during the summer, you know, on her off days, when I come home and she's been with those kids all day long, she's just like, you're going to have to do something. You know, <laughs> like I need to go yeah. in here and just be alone for a while. So, right. yeah, she ain't sitting at home with her kids all day. So she starts her day at 6.30 a.m. when she wakes and sets out her husband's clothes before preparing his breakfast and making him a packed lunch. After her own breakfast, she does 15 minutes of vintage exercises. <laughs> uh, she said that was a lot of stretching, warming up, limbering up, as they would say back then. The 30-year-old will, will then have a shower, put on a full face of vintage makeup, and dress in clothes from that era. My entire wardrobe is 1950s, made up of dresses I've made myself from original patterns, I always try and look my best, and I feel most like myself when I'm wearing vintage-style dresses. Now, let me just stop right here <laughs> and say, Lars, while you're off at work, you may just want to make sure the milkman's not stopping by. <laughs> you know? I just, that just popped in my head. Okay? I'm just saying. It's like, if she's getting all that dolled up, like, as soon as you leave, I mean... She didn't. Have, she don't have to do that until like five minutes before he get home. So, <laughs> well, I was gonna say that uh, you know, milkmen primarily just take their milk to the grocery store nowadays, don't they? Yeah, but I, but if she could get a milkman to bring her, yeah, like milk every yeah. day, like back in the day, I know there's probably. I mean, this Oregon, so they got to be some hippy dippy like organic home delivery milk 
guy or something. There has to be. Man. Yeah. If I not, if, we wonder, should move out there and start say, that. I wonder if that would catch on here. Oh, I, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to have to milk cow. Dairy farming is tough work, man. Tough work. Well, between the two of us, do we have enough kids we could just make them do it? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Thomas owes me some money, and too. And I'd have to pay him. Yes. So uh, when he returns, Lars does insist on hanging up his own coat, though. <laughs> <laughs> When Lars gets home, he likes to hang his own coat up, which I don't mind. I read in a 1950s book that if a man wants to hang his own coat up, you should not feel like it makes you a bad housewife. Okay. Now, Dave's been asking me why I drop mine at the door every day when I get home. <laughs> I know. Well, I don't think I've worn a coat in almost a year now. No, yeah. But... Yeah, I pretty much tried to sell all of them. I was like, it's never going to be winter. But before global warming caught on, and I used to wear coats, you right. know. All right, so uh, when it's not in use, the television is hidden away so as not to mess up the vintage look of the room. Um, and Katrina says that Lars is very appreciative of what she does. She explained, I think a man needs his wife to make him feel feel spoilt every once in a while. I would never expect, expect this from me, though. It is entirely my idea to live like this. It's always been my dream since I was a little girl. In a way, Lars is serving me because he makes a lot more money than I do, and he knows this is what I want to do in return. Okay, I'm now convinced this is voodoo. (laughs) (laughs) He works very long hours and makes my dreams come true. All right, so he's working very long. I'm telling you, I'm saying, she made me stay at home for a reason. Y'all ain't got no kids. (laughs) You know, I try to make his dreams come true, too. It's an equal partnership. I'm outspoken, and I'm definitely not a repressed woman. Spoken like a repressed woman. Yeah. Got one more long quote from her, too. Uh, She says, The golden rule, then, was to do to others what you want them to do to you. No decade is perfect. Definitely, we had big social problems in the 50s. But the people I talked to who lived through that era say it was a time when you could leave your door unlocked. And you didn't need to worry about people breaking in. I would say she probably doesn't have any <laughs> African American friends. What too great for them during the fifties, you know? Yeah, it may have been out in Oregon. I don't know, but probably not anywhere, you know. Uh. Uh, people today have forgotten how to talk to people they don't agree with, and they have lost all their manners. They are always in a rush. They don't remember to say please and thank you. Nowadays, people are looking out for themselves and not thinking about the people around them. So. She goes on to say how they used to be able to borrow, you know, a scoop of sugar from their neighbor and all mm-hmm. that. And now that nobody knows who their neighbor is, basically just shaming all of us for right. living in technology. But, yeah, she's definitely cheating on us, dude. So, <laughs> straight up. Maybe this is not a good idea for my wife, you know? <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Lars. Mm. He's not really dressed like a 50s guy either. He looks like your standard coffee house hipster i was gonna say he, he does look like the kind of guy who's sitting in the corner yeah and he's he's not gonna say anything to the barista but he's upset because he got yeah. three splendors instead of two right, exactly <laughs> yeah i mean he would have a suit and tie on if he was going 50s style right yeah 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 so uh he's, ladies, he looks I, like he's yeah. like this is your thing yeah <laughs> you know i mean ladies of the world of the earth oddity world you may want to consider spoiling your husband every now and then. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. You know, my wife doesn't listen anymore, but she spoils me anyway. So. Yeah. Because, you know, she knows she ain't going to find nobody better than me. I mean, <laughs> I dog talk about a catch. Yeah, I, I feel am. like I'm not that hard to spoil. Yeah, I me mean, either. I mean, I have very, very <laughs> low mean, threshold. There's one thing, but if the kids are around, <laughs> all you got to do is is let me go to my room and play video games and leave me alone. <laughs> and I consider that to be i'm spoiled yeah. you know yeah yeah i mean i'm just you know Dieter knows when i get home she better be in that kitchen rattling them pots and pans <laughs> <laughs> you know have that laundry done you know because i work hard for a living yeah and uh yeah so she knows what's good for her to keep this man around because there is <laughs> like i remind her all the time there's a chubby lady with a little bit of a mustache at the convenience store <laughs> That would love a man like me. I mean, she would fall head over heels for a man like me. So don't think I don't have options out there, okay? <laughs> oh, man. But if there are any ladies that want to get into this 50s lifestyle, maybe hit up Katrina and pick up some tips from her. And, um, you know, if you got an attractive milkman around, it may work out good for you <laughs> like it is for her. So, Well, John, what do you think about scooters, electric scooters? 
I, I'm really indifferent to them. I bought the kids some once. I was about to say, cool. I'm talking about the ones that you rent. Yeah, for, like, like, like in, or whatever. Like, well, like in big cities. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. We don't have any of those here in Tuscaloosa, so I really don't have an opinion. Yeah, I don't know if we – they may have them on campus. I don't know. Though, Do they? Sure. I, I don't think I've ever seen one – anybody riding around on one. Yeah, I don't know. I was just throwing that out there. I have no knowledge. But uh, there was a man in Florida who was arrested for uh, vandalizing the scooters. <laughs> and <laughs> he had had enough. Check this out. A man in Florida has been sneaking around his neighborhood, tampering with electric scooters parked on the streets, police say. Fort Lauderdale police posted a surveillance video Tuesday showing a man walking up to an electrical scooter on the street, slapping a white sticker on its QR code oh. so no one can you know scan yeah. it and rent right. it, Yeah, and then cutting its brake lines, Ooh. essentially rendering it impossible to use. Now, is he from a rival scooter gang? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he just, I think he's a Luddite. I think that's what's really going on here. Anyway, police say that, get this, more than 140 scooters have been disabled and vandalized in a similar way in the southeast part of Fort Lauderdale since April 15th. Wow. Officers had already honed in on 59-year-old Randall Williams as a possible suspect, and the majority of the acts of vandalism happened within two blocks of his apartment. (laughs) (laughs) Hoping to nab the saboteur, cops staked out the area over the weekend. In the early hours of Saturday and Sunday, police say they saw Williams leave his apartment on his nightly rounds of scooter sabotage. (laughs) He walked the neighborhood in a stealthy fashion, utilizing the shadows and the alleyways to conceal his movements, according to their reports. <laughs> He's like the Batman of uh, of scooter vandalism. <laughs> Police say they saw him vandalize seven scooters on Saturday and an additional nine on Sunday. So, hey. Well, he's getting after it. <laughs> I was about to say, they let him really go down. Yeah. I mean, they said it was more than 140, but daggum, like 20 of those <laughs> were like on the cop's watch while they were watching. Right, yeah. Yeah, their <laughs> stick out was not going too well. They anyway. ducked into Krispy Kreme or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. When they arrested Williams, he had with him two sets of, cha- of wire cutters, a pair of handheld lock pliers, and he was wearing a glove. I like to think it was a single glove with speckled rhinestones. A a Michael Jackson glove. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Police estimated the cost to fix each scooter at $70. Mm. So it says for the total of 20 scooters to which they linked him so far, the bill comes out to around $1,400. Wow. Now that's just for the 20 scooters they saw him tear up. Right. I can't imagine for like 140. How much are these scooters worth? If he's no doing idea. $70 in damage yeah. to them, you wouldn't think they would cost much more than that. No, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I'm trying to think because we bought both the boys one, but it's mm-hmm. been a long time ago. Right. And, uh, but I think they were maybe like 150 bucks, something like that. So, wow. That's, yeah. Maybe they're just buying new scooters and that's where the yeah, I don't know. $70 is going. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Cause I think if you're buying a bunch of them, you could probably cut that rate down. Yeah. Well, you would think. Yeah. Right. Uh, a spokeswoman for police told CNN that a multiple that multiple brand of scooters were affected. The cost estimate for the vandalism doesn't take into account lost revenues from rentals while the scooters were inactive. Williams did return CNN calls for comment on Tuesday. According to the police report, Williams wanted to limit what he told authorities because he didn't want to dig himself into a grave. So basically, he just told <laughs> CNN, "I'm I'm not talking yeah, because right. anything." I say yeah, no. can and will be exactly. used against me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Smart. He was booked on charges of criminal mischief, resisting officers, and loitering or prowling. He was released Monday after posting $500 in bond, according to Broward County Sheriff's Office. To help protect riders from jumping on a faulty scooter, a company operating the scooters, which authorities didn't name, deactivated all of its scooters in the neighborhood, the police report says. Spokespeople for Lime, Bird, and Bolt told CNN that they're grateful to authorities for taking action. Nice. Lime said that they will seek appropriate legal action against those that damage or vandalize our property. We have zero tolerance for vandalism and aggressively address it when it occurs, a Bird spokeswoman told told CNN. (laughs) And Bolt co-CEO Sarah Haynes told CNN in a statement that the company had full-time teams with mechanics to continuously monitor and identify any cases of potential vandalism. So I don't want to, I don't want to assume here, but this really seems like a 
a boomer is just upset at the yeah. millennials oh, riding around his neighborhood on scooters. Right. They go zipping down the sidewalk in these scooters. You know it's exactly what it was. <laughs> You're like getting mad about it. And because he's for the people, mm-hmm. he took his wire cutters yeah. and his lock, his channel locks and his single white speckled <laughs> glove out to the streets <laughs> to put a stop to this. Yeah, I could see probably this guy and a few <laughs> others sitting at like a Hardee's in the morning having coffee, <laughs> yeah. complaining about the scooters, and he's just like, I'm by God. Gosh, I'm gonna do something about it. And then they all shake their fists uh-huh. together when one yes. of them zips by the Hardys. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh man, and now he's in trouble. It's yeah. only fourteen hundred bucks. I mean, not only for now. I don't have fourteen hundred bucks laying around to spend on it. Unless they can link him to all those other ones. Yeah, but I'd ha- I'd have a hard time. They they're gonna have a hard time linking me to anything else, you know. I'm like him. I'm shutting up, not saying another word. No, sir. It was the first ones I've ever touched. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah. That's that's tough, man. So that was in Florida, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's move to another Florida story. Todd sent me this uh, story. I saw it on a few other places. Uh, it may have even got posted in the Facebook group, but it is from the website theonlyfloridaman.com. Okay. Trusted Florida news source. <laughs> yes. Florida woman disguises meth as a hair bow. And here's a picture for you. Get Check out the show notes if you're listening. Oh, yeah. That's pretty inventive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's nice. Sometimes you just got to give it the old community college try. <laughs> this is a really great article. Such an instance happened a couple of days ago. I personally don't think it was such a bad try. I mean, aside from it being a clear baggie, she might have been on to something with that. She was also riding strong with a ton of warrants, which just doesn't look good. Uh, Jessica Crop was pulled over in Marion County after a cop noticed her registration was expired. When the cop asked for a driver's license, she informed him it was suspended. <laughs> She also told the officer that she did not have insurance and did not know where the registration for the vehicle was located. The cop then discovered that she had five valid warrants out for her arrest. Crop was Dang, pl- <laughs> she's not holding back, is she? No. Crop was placed, uh, was placed under arrest and ordered to step outside of the car. As the cop was placing her in handcuffed, he noticed that a bow on her head was made from meth. <laughs> did he know that (laughs) you know which crop said was not hers (laughs) i got this at claire's (laughs) she was exactly right (laughs) crop was arrested on charges of possession of meth with the intent to deliver possession of drug paraphernalia driving with a license suspended and no liability insurance and she was taken to the marion county jail where she was held on a twenty three thousand two hundred and ten dollar bond that's a lot more than 500 like uh old boomer <laughs> yeah right yeah but i mean you just got to give it to her for trying you know <laughs> if she maybe would have spray painted that baggie a different color yeah if she, i was just sitting here yeah. thinking what if it had been like pink yeah you know he probably would have never even noticed yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, I'm sure if they were booking her into jail, they'd probably take your hair bows out. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it goes over on the women's side, but they took my hair bows away when I got put in jail <laughs> that time. Uh, so, you know. But then you get them back when you get yeah, out, right? right? Yeah, they just put them in a box. You get everything <laughs> you out. You just don't get to smoke that meth for a while. <laughs> yeah, right. It'll be aged to perfection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, it just is. Uh, you got to give it to her for try. Yeah. You know, I'm proud. Of, I like to see a good effort. Man. But yeah, that's all that story is. I just thought it was funny. And uh, for anybody out there looking to smuggle methamphetamines, you may want to try this method. <laughs> or other methods. Yeah. Well, she's got a ton of hair on her, you know, yeah. that was in that picture. She could have just probably hid it inside like a ponytail or something. Mm-hmm. I know people that have smuggled things inside a ponytail, maybe into a concert or something like that. Right. Yeah. Because they don't really pat your hair down. Well, there's <laughs> there's only one surefire way. <laughs> to hide you don't have to boof it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's one way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one way. I mean, there's there's a few different methods you can use. But yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. definitely. I mean, now you got to clean everything off when you get it out. <laughs> you know, yes. a little trouble on the back end. You know. <laughs> yeah. And if that. you get searched, you don't want to break wind no. on the officers. <laughs> yeah. no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> at least not in Scotland. <laughs> 
Okay, well, moving on to my last story here. Mm -hmm. This comes from ClickOrlando.com. Florida church could move into former strip club. Okay. (laughs) All right. Double D's Ranch is listed for $9 million. (laughs) $9 million? (laughs) What kind of strip club was this? It was Double D's Ranch. Okay. I like the name. (laughs) You know, sketchy. It is. It is. I wonder what their brand looked like. <laughs> but imagine, I mean, if it's listed for nine billion dollars and there's a church thinking about getting it, church got some cash. I mean, is this is the uh, is, you know Mr. Olstein sitting like a another I, church up in Florida? Or I would say if we as Highlands so getting ready to open a <laughs> campus down there, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Wellington, Florida, a Florida church that currently meets at a high school, is considering buying a former strip club to hold its services. The Palm Beach Post reports officials at New Sound Church are in negotiations to purchase the Double D's Ranch building that was once owned by a man accused of mob ties and closed late last year. Okay. Pastor Josh Monty told the Post that the church is looking to expand. Whether in this location or another, the church was established in 2018 and meets at Wellington High School. The extra That's some growth right there if they're already <laughs> moving into a strip club. It is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey. Shout out to them. How much space do they have? Let's see. The X Strip Club offers 20,000 square feet of space. Goodness. And it's listed at $9 million and has been on the market since November in 2018. Wow. So. Wow. 20,000 square foot. <laughs> That's a lot of room for a strip club. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, not that I got a ton of strip club experiences, but the ones I've been to have been pretty small. But the good thing is, like, if you do open up there, maybe some of the old clientele come back. They just see some activity going on, and they're like, oh, Double D's is back open. You can get them in there. <laughs> and also, really great place for see you at the pole every year. <laughs> You know? Yeah. <laughs> Which for people who don't know is what people who live worldwide. I don't know if they do it worldwide. See you at the pole is an event they have every fall at like the schools, at least here in the South, where kids get together and like circle up around the flagpole and pray before school. Right. Pretty great event. It may be an everyday event down at the old Double D Strip Club <laughs> church. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's great. You know, uh, what something used to be doesn't mean anything, you know, if you're turning it into something else. So. I like to think of the service going something like this. You know, like the pastor stands up and he's like, as our musicians come and play the music, I just want us all to think about maybe things in our life that we need to think about. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody, just bring it on down to the pole and leave it for the Lord. Everybody, come on down to the pole and leave it for the Lord. We got Associate Pastor Sullivan over here on the satellite stage. Anybody needs to talk to him, he's available, you know? Maybe you've been struggling with with a certain type of sin in your life, and you'd like to come talk to somebody. Maybe you would just like to join the church. Maybe you would like information on becoming a Christian. That's right. Whatever it is, just come on down. Just come right on down to the big As our musicians ball. play, <laughs> we're going to sing one more verse. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna turn the... Turn the lights down. Get the strobes going. Yeah. All the black lights are on. Y'all just, just take them on. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is between you and the Lord. This is between you and the Lord. Nobody else is looking. <laughs> well, every old person listening to this will be like, uh, well, I live in the women who come to church these days dress like strippers anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dude, I, I'm going to tell this story very carefully because I don't want anyone who goes to church with us to hear this. But supposedly some people in the choir, there was a mass text that went out to the choir about dressing modestly. Oh, for real? On Sunday morning. For yes, real? Because so apparently there was someone who was wearing a skirt and... Mom, <laughs> goodness gracious, mom! And someone in the uh, service thought mm-hmm. it was a little short. Oh, and said something. Oh, and, I saw some knees. <laughs> and my and my wife told me that the person who complained wasn't even a Christian. They were just there that morning oh. and saying, "I can't believe I'm coming to church," and someone is, <laughs> is wearing that up on stage. And I asked Tara, I said. 
are you sure they weren't a weren't a Christian? Because they sound a lot like a Christian complaining <laughs> like that. Exactly. <laughs> no, they sound like they've been in the Baptist church for a while. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure they're not a Christian? Because they sound like <laughs> one. <laughs> That's amazing. Those and the blue jean people, the people who get mad about people wearing blue jeans yes. to church, kill me. Kill me. I don't wear blue jeans to church because I want to go to heaven, but I don't have a problem with other people who do. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. Well, I mean, I hope, I wish this church well. It sounds like they're doing good things if they're already getting ready to purchase a nine million dollar facility, yeah. you know. And, and uh, that's one less gentleman's club. That's so. right. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's what we need to do, <laughs> yeah. you know, just move into strip clubs all over the South. Maybe we could set up EOP studios <laughs> in a strip club. <laughs> I just want to see, like, Church of the Highlands, Wesley's Booby Traps campus, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Church of the Highlands, Sammy's Gentleman's Club campus. <laughs> they already got all the fog machines and everything that they need for it. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's perfect. It's perfect. The lighting. Yeah. The lighting's there. <laughs> that's right. They got it just right. I mean, <laughs> got a stage and everything. So. And the, the pastor, he can, like, walk down into the middle of yeah, the that's right. congregation. right. The thing right <laughs> yeah. out in the middle. <laughs> and to preach to everybody you know <laughs> now you want to get some clorox wipes on that whole thing before you move in okay yeah i just want to just see anybody's listening let's let's run a few sanitary wipes over the whole thing okay yeah yeah disinfectant yeah <laughs> well let's move on my last story here it comes from m live which is like michigan's ale.com two suspects scaled a six-foot fence to put porn on a michigan freeway billboard oh snap Yep, Auburn, to he- Auburn Hills, Michigan, home of the Detroit Pistons, by the way. I don't think they play at the Palace in Auburn Hills anymore. Anyways, um, two hoodie-wearing suspects scaled a six-foot fence and forced their way into a building housing computer equipment in order to run pornographic video on a digital billboard along I-75 late Saturday night, police said. Why? Why would... I mean, is this just... Is this Operation Mayhem? You know? I, mean, I, don't, I mean, why... I think it's just because to see if they could, you know, if I had to guess. Right. Um, now, they definitely... I mean, need... they didn't hang around to watch it, did they? I don't know. I don't... <laughs> not in that house, I bet. Uh, I would think these people are prime candidates for a strip club church, though. <laughs> That's your demographic right there, you know? <laughs> Uh, new details have been released in the uh, investigation by the Auburn Hills Police Department as to how the suspects gained access to the small building underneath the billboard, which holds the equipment used to run the billboard's advertising. The suspects were captured on video inside the building uh, where they were able to access a computer and play pornographic video on the billboard, Lieutenant Gaganen said in a press <laughs> release. The two suspects got into the building at 10.49 p.m. Saturday, the police said, noting the date shown on the video image is not correct, and they were inside for about 15 minutes. Hmm. Because the security video camera has a night vision component, police said it is not known what color clothing the suspects had on. A short time after the suspects entered the building, Auburn Hills police began to receive calls from motorists <laughs> <laughs> saying the billboard on the east side of I-75 South of M-59 was showing pornographic images on both its north and south sides. Officers arrived. And we got three accidents, by the way. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and a, just a crowd of guys gathered around on the side of the road. <laughs> we need to get we need a cop down there if nothing else to direct traffic. <laughs> That's right. And maybe a hazmat truck for we, cleanup. We need to reroute traffic because <laughs> right. this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there are teenagers all over the interstate. Officers arrived to find the video still playing and reached out to the billboard company's emergency contact to shut down the board. But we believe the video may have been playing for at least 15 to 20 minutes before it was turned off, police said. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, we had a similar story this week that didn't make it into the show. Yeah. But there was, I think, a Foot Locker in Auckland, of That's all right. places. Yes. It took, my favorite country, by the way. <laughs> it took them several hours to turn it off. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, you know, this is a... I, I've talked about the uh, cameras, the traffic cameras. Yes. And I, I don't know if they still have the channel where they used to cycle through and it would show all the different cameras. <laughs> yeah. Well, one they night, still got it. They've added a few too. Yeah. One night, you know, uh, Randy, my roommate, was mm-hmm. like sitting at home and the camera that was on the strip, which for anybody not Tuscaloosa is where all the college <laughs> kids are going. Yes. 
Like whoever was running that camera was like zooming in on co-eds, <laughs> you know, not good parts while they were walking down the street and everything. I remember reading this story yes. in the Tuscaloosa newspaper. Right. I remember this. Yeah. And yeah. It was a pretty big deal. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, because yes. it was like broadcasting all over the city. And then and there were these guys that saw the camera and yes. they started making right. like yep. gestures. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Then people started going down to get on the camera. You know? yes. <laughs> we should have tipped the dude off, whoever was doing this, that, hey, people obviously know what's going on. But it continued to go on for a while longer. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like as soon as the first person saw it, which may have been Randy Johnson. Shout out, Randy, if you're listening. The big unit, Randy Johnson, my old roommate, uh, who just started calling everybody going, hey, turn it on the traffic camera thing. And, you know, and the like, people were like, I can get on TV. Exactly. But you're like, it's like, hey, man, there is some pervert at the highway department uh, zooming in on girls walking up and down the strip in their short skirts and stuff. You know? Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. Oh, pretty man. wild. But yeah. Anyways, these... Uh, heroes who broadcast <laughs> pornography out there they need to be brought to justice you know i would like to talk to them and find out how they did it mm -hmm. maybe we could run like a eop advertisement <laughs> right you know you know, hack in and just do it we would like to use those powers for good yeah, right. not evil because there's several digital billboards around here and they cost a yeah. lot because i looked into them when i had the restaurant it costs yeah. a whole lot to get on them and by good we mean helping ourselves yeah right yeah <laughs> just a little bit of publicity for us good for us Let's just put the call out to anybody in the audience who knows how to hack into these things just to go on your own and run our logo, maybe download the podcast, you know, put that in script beside it or something in whatever city you're in. You know? Or maybe you own a billboard and nobody yeah. ever rents. True. And you want to give somebody like a dirt cheap deal just to put something up so yeah. something's on there. And by dirt cheap, we mean free. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> we mean cheaper than dirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we have a friend who deals in dirt. He <laughs> makes a good bit of money, you know? So, Mr. Gerganus. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> makes a good bit of cash. So, but it's good for him, you yeah. know? He's not a billionaire or anything. <laughs> no, though. no, no. Yeah, so anyways, uh, you probably shouldn't be broadcasting pornography on the side of an interstate you, at 10.30 at night. You definitely shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, let's just set aside like my personal moral beliefs <laughs> and ethics. Just the ethics of, hey, it's going to cause an accident. Yeah, the distracted you know? driving. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> well, I heard... Uh, you know, people were asking what the title of the movie was. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they were calling 911 to see. <laughs> All right. That's it. You got any more? No. Nah. We want to thank our sponsor, World Famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, for their support. Check them out at CajunCurl.com. You can order the spice and their Cajun Curl Cutter for Potatoes all on CajunCurl.com. It was created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana, and it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, and anything else you can think of putting it on. The Spiral Potato Cutter is absolutely amazing. It's easy to use, it's easy to clean, and it will allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. If you want to turn your next michigan interstate trip up a notch <laughs> imagine whipping up a batch of homemade potato chips and you stop at the porn billboard sharing some <laughs> chips with your friends watching a little adult movie right there on the side of the road uh, for all it, to see for all to see uh, and it will change your life on the website cajuncurl.com you can order the bayou blended spice and the chip cutter there and you can also find recipes that are mind-blowing on the website, too, you can locate locate your nearest retailer or order your own. If your local grocer doesn't carry world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, ask them to start stocking it now. Here locally, it's available at Vowels on Skyland Boulevard, South Finest Meats, Mark's Mart in Northport, and Piggly Wiggly in Northport. All of their products are made in the USA, so not only do you enjoy the taste of Cajun Girl, but you also feel patriotic while you enjoy your meal. It's all natural, it's low salt, has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice tastes the spice, but not the heat. 
Check them out at CajunCurl.com and use the promo code EOP10, that's E-O-P and the number 10, to get a 10% discount. Because we ask that you use a spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. That's right. All right. Well, we talked last show about a Stitcher review that somebody had left for us, right, but yeah. I was too stupid to figure out how to get to it. Okay. You know, I tried to look it up on my phone's browser. Right. I tried the app. I tried the desktop browser, Chrome, Internet Explorer. Safari. I still can't get it. I don't know. And now the problem, it must be me. Who knows? You know, I'm just, I'm too dumb. I, I can't Stitcher. I'm sorry. <laughs> but fortunately, the person who left that review had listened to the show and they contacted me. Ah. And they just screenshotted it and nice. posted it up in the Facebook group. I, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, okay. they did. So Cool. So this is what they says. This comes from Swanee and it's five stars and whoop, five stars. A podcast I can listen to with my car windows down. Okay. <laughs> I came across this podcast through the host guest appearance on another show that had a guest appearance on a podcast I'd subscribe to. And boy, oh boy, am I glad I followed this trail. The hosts are genuinely funny, well spoken articulate whoa <laughs> you give us too much credit look are they reviewing the right <laughs> podcast here they might not be <laughs> okay, i don't, I don't know, know. <laughs> anyway. say, i'll take it but i mean <laughs> articulate is not something that people really throw around for me and you <laughs> the hosts are genuinely funny well-spoken articulate and a pleasure to listen to each week genuine humor without going blue so i can listen to them with my father in the car okay well thank you so much swanee and thank you swanee's dad man Maybe yeah. you'd like to subscribe yourself. Yeah, Papa Swan. <laughs> Papa Swan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Papa Swan. <laughs> yeah, maybe he should leave a review, too. Yeah, and thank you so much for not only relieving that review. But going but through then, all that trouble. <laughs> but then snapshotting it <laughs> and posting it on Facebook Notice, so that, you know, dumb yeah. redneck tiny could actually read it. Notice that Swanee, I don't know if it's male or a female, uh, <laughs> didn't put anything about us being intelligent in there. <laughs> That's true. <You> know? <laughs> I got them all the adjectives they threw around. <laughs> Intelligent wasn't one. So, yeah. I was well spoken and articulate in describing my complete inability to read a Stitcher review. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, thanks again so much, not yeah. only for leaving the review, but for going the extra mile and yeah. letting me be able to read it. Yeah. And like helping to boost my ego. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. I need that. I need we do. that. <laughs> well, uh, I guess you got anything else? I don't. I don't have anything else at all. All right. Well, if hope that's everybody the case, has a good week. It's supposed to turn a little cooler. How, well, they say that. Yeah, I believe, I believe it when, when I see it. When it happens. Yeah. Although you know, if it just drops down to eighty five, that'll be yeah, huge be, for us. I mean, that'd be I'd, nice. I'd wear long pants. <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> and when you say long pants, you're talking about your personal monogram. That's right. On yes. Long pants my, my, from my line of clothing <laughs> that's soon to be released. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Long pants. The long pants brand. Yeah. Well, anyway, extra crotch room. Just gonna throw that out there. Okay. <laughs> We call them ballroom pants. That's right. That's the loose right. trading company stole it from us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been listening to our Thought Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us, no matter where you get us, where you get us from Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher. We're on them all. All of them. If you would like to write into the show, we are earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to tweet at us, we are at underscore earthoddity on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You know, just plain old earthoddity was taken by somebody else who hasn't yeah. tweeted in Loser. Loser. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Try to find me on Twitter. Uh, Squirrel did, by the way. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Camelot is crumbling. I know. I know. You're going to have to start a new one. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I've already thought about that, by the way. <laughs> well, we also post pictures sometimes. Mm-hmm. They're underscore orthodity on Instagram. That's right. And if all that fails, we'll do it the old fashioned way and call a phone number and leave That's us a right. voicemail. What's, yep. that, what's that number? It's 662 493 2059. Probably our most popular way people contact us. 662 493 2059. We hope everyone out there has an excellent week. Earth Oddity for the Fringe Radio Network signing off. Love y'all. Bye. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening. 
also huge shout out to Francisco Ruiz for recording us a super awesome intro this week. You can check him out over on his podcast, the Retro Rewind Podcast. Thank you.